everybody. Uh, so I, I don't know if God does this for you. Uh, God does this for me where every once in a while he will hit me over the head with the same piece of scripture and it will come from different places. And that's how I know God's really trying to focus me in on this. And, and that's happened to me recently uh, with regard to Psalm 91. And God's had two or three different pastors who I listen to and trust have referenced Psalm 91. And the other day, even my wife, Sarah, was hovering over Psalm 91. And so for some reason, God really wants me at least to focus on Psalm 91. So I've spent the last couple of days doing some meditating over Psalm 91. And there's a handful of things that have stuck out to me that I wanna, that I wanna share with you. Uh, first of all, the Psalm starts with a beautiful verse. It says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And so it says, if we dwell in God's president, if we dwell in God's presence, we can rest in His shelter. That's how the psalm starts. Then, in the middle of the psalm is this verse that seems incredibly applicable today. It says, "No plague will come near your tent, for He will command His angels to guard you." No plague will come near your tent, for he will command his angels to guard you. And then the whole psalm sort of culminates with this series of verses at the end where it says things like, you will tread on the lion, you will tread on the snake, you will trample on darkness. And what's fascinating to me about th those verses, uh, the words tread, the words trample imply an action. They imply us doing something active. Uh, so trampling on darkness, you can't just sit down and trample on darkness. You have to do something. You have to do something active to trample on darkness. Well, the question is, with the world as it is, with all this darkness, with all this uncertainty out there, and with us basically confined to our homes and practicing social distancing, uh, which we all need to do, what can we do? What can we do to trample on darkness? Um, and the first thing I want to say is, is, is don't uh, not do what the uh, health experts are telling you to do. So don't ignore the adv advice and the wisdom of the health experts. I know there are some churches out there who are um, uh, kind of meeting um, are continuing to meet even though health experts are telling them not to do so. And I think that's wrong. I think that's a sin. I think that will damage the reputation of the church. So do the things that we're all supposed to do. Do the wise things. Wash your hands. Uh, don't touch your face. Uh, practice social distancing. Do the, the wise things that we're all so, being told to do by the medical experts. Don't ignore that advice. That's the first thing. But then the real question is, okay, well, what can we do? What's something active we can do if we're all confined to our homes and we're uh, you know, practicing social distancing what can we do to trample on darkness? Well, I think one thing that God might be telling us through all this is I think God might be telling us to focus on our families, focus on the relationships that matters most, the, the relationships that matter most. God has sort of uh, suddenly and abruptly stripped us of all of our extracurricular activities, and he's put us all back in our houses for a period of a few weeks. And I think maybe one thing God is trying to do through all that is to say, let's just stop. Let's stop the busyness. Let's stop the distractions. Let's stop the noise. And let's focus on our families. Let's focus on the relationships that matter most. And speaking of relationships that matter most, I think another thing God might be trying to tell us through all this is God might be telling us very clearly to focus on Him, the relationship that matters most. And um, one thing, uh, well, a handful of things that I've been trying to do during this season is I've been deliberately trying to listen to God more than I listen to the news. Uh, not ignoring the news, but listen to God more, more than I listen to the news. I've also been trying to read God's word, to read scripture more than I read articles about what's happening. It's not saying I'm ignoring what's happening, Happening. I'm not, but I'm deliberately trying to uh, listen to God and trying to discern what is God trying to say to all of us through, uh, through what's going on in the world today. I also think, and this one is, it, to be honest, it's kind of uncomfortable for me, and um, it, it seems weird and counterintuitive, but I think one thing that we can do that's very, very active, actually, although it, it's counterintuitive, is that we can you know, sort of waste time just adoring God, praising God, telling God how good He is. And one way we can do that, which to be honest is just uncomfortable for me, but it's all throughout the Bible, is we can sing. We can sing to God, and there's all throughout the Psalms, it commands us to sing to God, sing to God, make music to God, make a joyful noise to God. David spends a lot of time in the Psalms talking about his enemies. He'll say things like, God, deliver me from my enemies. And to be honest, I spent most of my life just ignoring those parts of the Psalms, just skipping over it. Because I would think to myself, well, I don't really have any enemies. Who are these enemies? Well, the Bible is very clear that we all have enemies. Uh, our enemies are not people most of the time, but rather uh, it says that your struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the, the spiritual presence, the dark forces of evil in the world. 
So we all have enemies. And the question is, what do we do against those enemies? Well, the Bible's clear that one thing we can do to fight those enemies is to sing. And it's counterintuitive, but um, imagine, so I'll give you an example from my life. If I have a bad day, a day where I don't feel like a very good husband, or a day where I don't feel like a very good dad, or a day where I don't feel like a very good president, and at the end of the day, I'm just kind of down about myself, the last thing in the world I want to do is sing. It's the last thing I want to do. And, and in fact, the, the idea of being a kind of person who would want to sing after a day like that just grosses me out. I don't want to be that person. But the question is, who stole my day from me? Because God didn't want me to have a bad day. God wanted me to have a joyful day. Somebody stole my day. Somebody stole my joy. And the, 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 it's the enemy. The devil stole my joy. The devil stole my day. And the question is, what would make him mad? What would make him mad at the end of a day like that is for me to be singing, to be singing in spite of the fact that he stole my day, that he stole my joy. And with the world going through what it is going through today, the devil's trying to steal our joy. The devil is trying to steal our hope. And I think one thing we can do in response to that, to trample on the darkness, is to sing in the face of that, uh, that ripping out of our joy. It's like what happens at the end of the, the Grinch Who Stole Christmas. The Grinch steals Christmas, and what tramples on the darkness in The Grinch Who Stole Christmas is that the Who's down in Whoville keep singing, even though Christmas has been stolen from them. So one thing I think we can do in the midst of this darkness, in the midst of this scary and uncertain time, is we can simply praise God and we can sing, even though we don't feel like it, even though it feels like a, a weird waste of time, we can sing. So those are some things that I think you can do. Obviously, you can spend a lot of time while you have uh, time on your hands. You can binge watch shows and you can play video games and you should do some of that. That's, um, I think, therapeutic. It's mentally healthy to do some of that. But don't spend all of your time doing that. Spend some time doing something productive. And who knows what might come out of this if we spend some time doing things that are productive. Spend some time reading. Spend some time writing. Spend some time doing research. Um, I love this story. Somebody told me this the other day, uh, that during the bubonic plague, so Isaac Newton was 20 years old during the bubonic plague, and he had to leave Cambridge. He had to leave Cambridge for a year. And it was during that year when he was forced to leave Cambridge that Isaac Newton discovered and wrote the theory of gravity. Uh, also, it's the case, as we know, that Paul, the Apostle Paul, wrote most of the New Testament while he was under house arrest. Uh, he was in isolation under house arrest, and he wrote most of the New Testament that way. So God can use these times. I, I don't think God. Um, uh, I don't think God. Um, is the one who uh, makes these things happen, but I think that God can use these things, use these circumstances for very, very good uh, things, for, for very good circumstances. And one way he can do that is by us doing something productive, by us doing something. And who knows, maybe the next equivalent of the theory of gravity will come from a hope student who's home doing something productive with their time. And that's one way we can trample on darkness, which is what Psalm 91 calls us to do. 